All right, good evening. How are we all doing today? Everyone can hear us, okay? Um, well, hello, welcome. Um, my name is Dan Miller. I'm one of the post-secondary counselors here in the College Career Center. Maybe, I'll, maybe we can all introduce ourselves really quickly. I'm Sarah English, the other post-secondary counselor. And I am Jamie Travis. I am the career resource specialist. We are really excited you're all here with us. Hopefully you're here for tonight's program, planning your future for sophomore family. So hopefully everyone here is a member of a sophomore family here at Stevenson. Um, thank you to those of you who came in person. We appreciate seeing live faces. For a couple of years, we were only on Zoom and we've, you know, we're circling back to being in person and we're on Zoom. So hello to everyone who's joining us um, either live or maybe watching this on demand with some popcorn at home. Um, just a few housekeeping notes for everybody. Um, for those of you that are on Zoom, it's a Zoom webinar. So um, what that means, again, if you're a viewer at home or if you guys watch this later, we can't see you, but you can hopefully see us. There is no ability for us to use the Q&A, so we won't be using that function tonight. And we will publish our slides and a video of the presentation for everyone that, that is here and watching online within about a week. We will send it to our communications team hopefully tomorrow. So if you want to over spring break, plan to rewatch this presentation, have at it, it'll be there for you on our College Career Center website. And those are our main housekeeping notes. This is our agenda for our time together. We're going to talk about some post-secondary pathways to kind of talk about what the next couple of years looks like and really beyond high school. We're going to discuss and do a deeper dive into the program Naviance, which hopefully you guys as sophomores have some familiarity with, that we introduced it to you guys last year for college and career information. It's our portal here at Stevenson. So we'll kind of give you a deeper dive with kind of how to access it and actually practice playing with it if you haven't had that opportunity recently. We'll also discuss career exploration, which is a big part of the Naviance platform. And we're actually going to do a very light beginning of how to begin the college search, kind of some things to think about in terms of factors that might be relevant for you guys as sophomores as you begin to think about becoming an upperclassman, which you'll be. You'll be rising juniors in just a couple months. And um, we have a short you know, evaluation survey at the very end. So that's kind of our short agenda for tonight. And again, Dan Miller and myself, Sarah English, we're the two post-secondary counselors. If you happen to have older children that went through this, um, uh, current juniors actually are under this, but seniors are above, graduated students, you were able to kind of pick between us. Um, and starting this year with our, our juniors and moving down, we've really now have kind of defined our scope of our work a little differently. We tend to get students that maybe played dad and mom against each other. Dan would work with them and then they would come around and talk with me and we just kind of worked with whoever. But now they've actually moved our offices and intentionally aligned us with counselors. So just like every student here has a counselor and they have a social worker and a psychologist and a dean, they now also have a post-secondary counselor that's aligned with their team. So my office is actually in the East Side Student Services now and I work with the East Side counselors. So if one of your counselors are under my name, I actually am your post-secondary counselor. And then Dan Miller works with the West Side counselors in green and gold team rooms. So if any of those are under Dan, you actually will now connect with Dan um, in the process. So we'll talk more kind of junior, senior year, what that looks like as we start to work with you a little more individually. Um, but just know that we align with your counselors. We're up with your counselor's office and have conversations together. This is a chart we kind of developed a few years ago. Um, we know actually a lot of our families are uh, maybe completed their undergraduate education outside of the United States. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we kind of communicated what the pathways look like and all the pathways that are out there for students that are looking for college opportunities beyond. We're also going to talk about a couple other post-secondary options after high school. Um, but in terms of the college piece, um, our community colleges align really well with our bachelors and anything in yellow is considered undergraduate. Um, so our, our students are able to maybe attend College of Lake County or Harper and if they wanted, they have articulated programs to transfer to a four-year school to finish for two years to still get the four-year degree or the bachelor's degree. Everything in gray is considered graduate and beyond. Um, and I know in many other countries, you're able to start medical school as an 18 year old, uh, but that isn't something that we do in the United States. So an undergraduate education in earning a bachelor's and then moving on to the professional degree is kind of that pathway. 
So jumping into different pathways and different opportunities, um, we are sort of jumping into one opportunity, which is um, military related opportunities. We um, actually host a military week each year. Um, in the past couple of years, it's been traditionally in the fall, usually coinciding with veterans kind of day. I believe it's gonna be changing next year. It might be moving to the second semester for the 24, uh, 25 school year, but stay tuned. I don't think an exact date has been picked yet, but li likely next spring. And there's different, different um, unique ways to kind of get involved with the military if anyone is interested. There's, of course, direct enlistment um, right after high school. There are college-based ROTC programs, which are basically an opportunity to be a full-time college student and have an affiliation with one of the armed service branches, where for the first couple of years, you get a pretty nice scholarship to be part of that ROTC program. And then you get the opportunity to kind of do the direct enlistment after college you kind of go all in after that sophomore year, but the first two years are kind of like a test trial to see if students like it. And students can still participate with neighboring schools, even if your own school has one affiliation with one member of the armed services, they can still connect with another kind of neighboring school they can get to it. There's the Army Reserves, there's also the military academies. So those are um, very unique opportunities where you're, the goal is to get direct enlistment and also get the college degree at the same time through schools like West Point and the um, Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy. Um, so they're a little bit unique processes that have some additional requirements a little bit early in the process to kind of go through that, um, th th that process for applying to those military academies. And as I, I'm not looking at the second bullet point, yes, you can enter as an officer through both of those opportunities. The ASVAB is a uh, basically a battery exam where you can take an assessment to learn kind of more about where potentially military related skills might fit in with the students background and interest and goals. We traditionally offer the ASVAB each year and I don't have the date offhand. I believe it's coming up soon. Time, time it with a late arrival. Yep, I think it's sometime in the next month or so. I, I, I we can double check the date for you. Um, and then, um, again, other resources that direct enlistment reserves can help pay for college. So we just wanted to highlight the tabs in the bottom are kind of what we're going to be kind of covering this evening. But there's a whole military resources tab that kind of does a deeper dive on all these different areas. This is just a brief overview if you wanted to kind of look at the different opportunities related to military after high school. Yes, so this past Thursday, we hosted our annual Career Ready Trades Expo. This is an event for Stevenson and also surrounding area students and families who are interested in learning more about alternative post-secondary pathways, whether that be two-year programs or some sort of apprenticeship. Um, some examples of businesses we had are real estate professionals. Um, we had all the traditional trades, the fire department, some flight schools. So it's a really great opportunity if you are unsure if you want to enter into the traditional four year um, college pathway and maybe get to learn about some different post secondary opportunities. Okay, and this is our website, which we're going to spend a little bit of time kind of profiling. We have a lot of resources here tonight for our sophomore families and a little deeper dive. Our career information is there as well as our college information um, and lots of FAQs, lots of videos that can give you access to our YouTube channel as well. Um, but today what we're going to do is take a few minutes to really walk through Naviance. Um, freshmen all have accounts to Naviance. These accounts um, are the same logins as their school login. So it's gonna be their email and their password connected. Um, they probably were in it freshman year for a profiler of a career. There's a lot of career interest inventories in here. We really wanted to take a few moments and show you some of the highlights of Naviance and some of the pieces that go with it. If you're Zooming at home and have access to your student's iPad and they're sitting next to you, we definitely encourage you to play along with it as we're going through the demonstration. If you brought it with you tonight, please feel free to break out your iPad together as a family so you can navigate this and play with it as you're kind of seeing the demonstration. So we have about a seven minute video that's going to show you how to go in and we've made this a video versus live because usually our internet struggles with us, so we don't want any lag.
And I realized that we need to get connection for the audio. Um, and let me see how we can maybe get that to play with the volume. Eric back there, I am through. Are you able to turn it up back there? It's going through the airplane. Mr. Miller, Ms. English, type. Okay, would you guys like for me to start over? Yes, I will do that. Thank you. So sorry for the technical difficulties.
Okay, our apologies to the people at home via Zoom. Um, it's been made to our attention that you probably couldn't hear the audio, but this walkthrough is on our YouTube channel, which I think Ms. Wallach is going to be dropping into the chat. So then you can actually hear the video a little later as well, but hopefully you were able to follow along with the demonstrations. And then we'll do it again. Okay. This is an overview of our calendar that um, for next year, just to kind of know about upcoming nights and, and the scope of this. So we will do a financial aid night for our junior families. Um, that will be you next year. And that will always happen. Um, and we actually do have the date for that one on September 30th. There will be a Choices College Fair that happens every fall as well, and this is specifically for students who have an IEP or a 504. Um, and we take turns in the area hosting that. So in the fall, there's going to be one at Niles. We do have a first generation series as well that it's four nights. We have an upcoming night coming up on April, um, in early April, that um, is all via Zoom. Um, but for families that are interested in that, please keep an ear out, uh, an, uh, an ear out in your email for that, or an eye out, I should say. We will do a junior family night in uh, November and December, and we'll be doing, and I think we can spend this a little bit later about our post-secondary scope meetings. Um, Jamie does a great summer job fair for our students that maybe some of your students participated in in February. I think it was on, wasn't on Valentine's Day, was it? 15th, the day after Valentine's Day. After. Um, and then we talked about the Career Expo, which we will have again. And um, Jamie also has some great summer career exploration courses um, that she'll be talking about a little bit um, soon, too. And again, these dates are a little vague on purpose because we're still sort of waiting confirmation from the school about the spaces and the location. So that's why we put kind of months or a couple different months on there. So as, as Ms. English shared, we'll, we will clarify the specific dates and locations later for you guys once we get the full go ahead from the school. Hi, I'm just going to introduce myself again. My name is Jamie Travis and I am the career resource specialist here. This is my first year in this role and I'm super excited to be talking to you all tonight about how I can help everyone in their high school and post secondary journey. So to start, I'm going to kind of just chat about the why um, as a sophomore in high school and as a parent of sophomores in high school, I'm sure there's some questions to why you would want to even start to think about careers, but I don't sit down with students and talk about exactly what they have to do in their future. It's more so just trying to kind of start those conversations, discover students likes, likes and dislikes, talk about getting involved in certain ways and really just general career exploration to make sure students are informed of different aspects of jobs, whether that be the education involved, whether that be the salary, whether that be the lifestyle a job has. Um, my goal is to just make sure students have all as much information as possible to make those informed decisions for their future and just to know about all of the cool and exciting jobs that exist. I feel like so many jobs kind of fly under the radar. So yeah, that's my goal. And then obviously towards junior senior year, it is important to kind of maybe even have any sort of a direction. So my goal is to just help students even begin to get that direction. Like I said, we're not trying to make any career decisions as a sophomore in high school, but just really kind of exposing students to necessary information and resources on how to explore those. So yeah, for this section here, um, I'm going to navigate how to get to this part of the website, but this QR code will lead you to the career exploration page of the website, but I'm gonna do a lot of live navigation now. So we'll just start with that by going to the D125 website. Then we're gonna go Academics, College Career Center, Career Exploration Program. Here is how students can make an appointment with me on this part. Oops, scroll up a little bit. <laughs> on this part here, if they click that, it will bring them to a Google form to fill out. And if there's any issue with that, I always say you can feel free to email me. I'm more than happy just to set it up that way as well. Um, and yeah, so I meet with students to set up a lot of different shadowings and discussions of the website, but I'll get into that a bit more after we kind of go through everything. So what I'm going to do is start with additional resources. We're gonna to go to this career resource tab here. We already kind of discussed Naviant, so I'm not gonna really touch on that, but I'm gonna highlight 
this website first. This is the Illinois Pathways website. So what you're looking at right now are different career clusters. And I'm going to say that phrase a lot, career cluster. What that is, it's just groupings of careers and it allows you to kind of just, like I said, have categories for these careers. So you can see here all of the different clusters. Let's just click health science and see what that looks like. So I'll, I'm gonna show you three websites and all these websites kind of have their own strengths. The strength of this particular website, at least one of them is that there is a vast amount of careers to explore under it. So there's over 200 different careers you could scroll through and look at and explore. And just for the sake of this, let's quickly look at one of them. Let's maybe do a dental hygienist. This little chart there or graph is just meaning it's in a high demand career. So you can see here just some quick facts about becoming a dental hygienist, wages, preparation, things like that. To get more specific and to get different information, there are these little arrows here that will bring you to more specific and, like I said, different information on the site. What we're going to do right now is just quickly look at the preparation there. And you see it has the information from that other page, but then it continues to expand on it with just more information on the type of education needed for this and the different types of education you can get if you would want to become this and what you could do with that. The other strength of this website, so we're going to click that arrow and go to wages and trends, is that this is the Illinois pathway um, website. So this is all specific information to Illinois. So if you're planning on staying in Illinois, it has a lot of good data and information about wages. It breaks it up here by county. So you can see we have Lake County and you can see the median wages and things like that. So those are the strengths of that website. We're going to get out of here and hop on to this one. This is career one step. And I'm just gonna click explore careers and career clusters. And then once again, you can kind of see those groupings. We'll go to health sciences. And I really just wanted to highlight this one because it groups careers by education. So if you have a high school education, you can see different careers to explore and so on and so forth. And it's just another good tool. And my personal favorite website, I use this website with students all the time. If you've met with me, we've probably looked at this website together. It is called the Occupational Outlook Handbook. Um, there's a couple of really great features about this website. I think it's just very user friendly. Generally, you can just kind of search a job and it comes up here. But then you can also head to this side here. Keep using the healthcare as an example. So on this page, there's two unique features. If you click that, it does that same type of grouping by um, education level. And then this here will group it or organize it, I should say, by salary. And then let's just click on one of them. We'll do the phlebotomist. And yeah, so you can see here kind of a summary page, you get the median pay type of education needed. And then if you click through all these tabs, you can get just more descriptions and information. Um, yeah, so you click through all those. The one I wanted to also highlight is the similar occupations tab. I think this one's great because if you're already on this website kind of looking at something, then maybe you can click there and see any related careers to explore. And I think it's just a good way to kind of get some different careers in mind. Okay, so those are the three resources I'm going to highlight there. Next, I am clicking on the Career Pathways tab, doing a little bit of a scroll, and I am going to be opening the Career Pathway booklet once it loads in just a second. Any moment now. There it is. Okay, so when we go to the second page, oh. Let me back up for a second to explain what this is. This is Stevenson's guide. So it has all of our classes, our clubs, and wonderful resources grouped by career cluster. This is not the course book. It is not a substitute for the course book, yet something you should kind of use in tandem with the course book. Um, so yeah, this is all hyperlinked here. If you click on, once again, we'll do that health sciences. You can see it brings you directly to this page, and I'm just going to kind of go through this page so you know what's going on. Here are the related clubs and activities to the health science career cluster. 
I'm not going to touch any of these or click any of these, but if you were to, it would bring you to the corresponding club page on the Stevenson website to get some information about whoever the sponsor is of the club and how to sign up for it. Here are some of those career resources we discussed. And then here it discusses recommended college paths. These are not the Stevenson requirements. Just a heads up with that. And then here you have um, grouped by grades, some recommended core courses. And then here you have some class considerations. You can think of those more so as electives. Once again, you are not expected to do all of these, but it's just kind of an FYI. Um, I also wanted to highlight or I guess say that if you're a student and you absolutely know you want to do something in the health science, it's still very important to try to involve yourself in things you genuinely enjoy outside of that as well. If that's taking a cooking class or joining the animal welfare club or something like that, it's very important to still pursue things you like and obviously still pursuing those career interests. but involving yourself in sports and extracurriculars and being just a very well-rounded individual is still just very important and you don't just have to do things to pop it on the resume. Okay, so yes, so we are going to go to a different section of the website called the, the Student Career Connection site. Once again, if you've met with me, we have probably covered this as well. Um, so this is kind of the implementing or the kind of next steps once you get a little bit more into your career interest. I like to go through this whenever I meet with students because I find a lot of this information is kind of unknown a bit and I think it's really useful and helpful. So when you click it, it'll just bring you to the part-time jobs tab, which is pretty self-explanatory. Just gonna be some part-time jobs. It's all linked and it'll bring you to websites of the applications. Career days and events, some of these are internal, meaning Stevenson hosts them like our lovely summer job fair we held. And then some of these are going to be external um, events, let's say like, let's pretend that you wanna be a pilot, we post things and advertise things out like this American Airlines career day. So that's what lives under there to kind of discuss shadowing now. So. We do have job shadowings. I am the person to meet with if you're interested in these. What this is, is a one-time partial day or full day in-person shadowing experience. If you scroll through these, you can see, let's do, let's set students up with this one often, so we'll click that. Um, I'll go through this quickly, but so you can see the experience type, job shadowing, that means it's going to be in person. You can see the title of the job, the career cluster and the career pathway, and then a little bit of a description about what the experience would entail. How to set these up, students just make an appointment with me. On that Google form, there's a section asking if there's something on the website you wanted to talk about, and then I'll know that ahead of time, and we meet in person, we talk about it and see if it's a good fit. And then from there, I help facilitate it and set it up. There is some liability waivers and things like that, but that's all kind of down the line. And if that's the case, we will meet the student. We'll discuss that. And obviously, as the parent, you'll be looped in. So if the in-person shadowing is not sounding like something the student wants to do, or if the student wants to, let's say, talk to someone like a marine biologist and not many marine biologists are around the area. What we do have is the virtual meets tab. What these are are pretty much Q&A sessions, discussions with career professionals. If you take a look at this part of the website, you'll see there's a lot more professionals under it, just simply for the fact um, that a lot more professionals can offer a discussion versus an in-person shadowing experience. Once again, they can meet with me to set these up. I'm sometimes involved in these calls if it's during the school day. I'm happy to have a student come down to my office and we can talk to the professional together or they can be after school as well. Okay, so this is one place to look into internship and research and work-based learning experiences. Um, the internship word is one that holds a lot of weight and while there are some internships that exist for high school students, there is not a, an abundance of them. So this isn't something that's extremely common to come by and really highlighting the importance of just being involved generally, if that's in a club, if that's volunteering, if that's 
um, just really immersing yourself in your coursework, if that's doing a research program, if that is doing an internship, um, all of that is very valuable experience. So don't let that internship word, uh, don't, don't get too stuck on that, I guess I should say. But these are grouped by career clusters and this is one place to look to kind of hop around for a second. These are volunteering opportunities. We have some information on how to volunteer at Condell, Northwestern, and then Vista Health Systems. I only highlight those because I meet with a lot of students who are interested in that specifically, but all the other ones on there are super great as well. Um, and to kind of jump back into summer programs, research programs as well. This tab here is a new tab we added, so I'm just gonna briefly go over it. If you apply to some of these programs or are interested in them, sometimes they'll ask for a letter of recommendation. All this is is discussing how to get that letter of recommendation. Okay, so this tab here um, has this link here, which I'm not gonna click on. We discussed the Naviance, and then I'm gonna briefly go over this page here once it loads again, which I'm sure it will do very soon. Um, but once it loads, you'll see, but this is a resource here that we created at Stevenson to help group, it might not load, but it's a resource we created to help group the different research programs and um, opportunities. So a lot of these are through, there we go. A lot of these are through colleges. So some of them have a cost, some of them don't, but just to highlight that this exists, it's um, updated for this year as well. So you can see that. And I just want to say again, it is not necessary to participate in these, but if you are interested and this is something that fits into your schedule, it's something you're curious to do, this is a resource that exists. And yeah, so if that's, that is that there, we're going to go back to here. Skip through these really quickly. Almost done. Okay. Couple more things. This is a QR code to make an appointment with me. It will only work with the student's school email. I also help students curate and edit resumes. That's something I help with. If there's any questions about the website um, that I just showed, I'm happy to talk about that. General career discussions. And also um, we've highlighted the summer job fair. We I also host and plan in uh, virtual and in-person large career speaking opportunities. I sent out an email last week, this Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. There is one with a neuroscientist. They're gonna be doing a presentation virtually and then answering some student questions after. If you have any questions about that, please email me. And then we also have our summer career classes. We have careers in STEM, healthcare, business, economics, and law and what these are are two week career exploration courses that combine both um, in person speakers and field trips so, for example, for the law one we would have let's say a criminal defense lawyer a judge and then some of the field trips we're planning are to go to DePaul law school and then it's obviously curated um, depending on which career you're interested in so yeah that's what I have, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, Ms. Travis has done such a great job with the program. We've been excited to have her as part of the team. And I feel like um, as sophomores, I have a freshman and sophomore here myself, and as an older student that has gone through this process, it's easy to kind of get lost in the chatter and hearing all the things and thinking that you need a set list if you're looking to apply to a four-year school. And um, I read, and I know Mr. Miller did too, the book Never Enough. I don't know if many of you are familiar with it. I know we had... Um, um, Jenny uh, Wallace to, to speak on behalf and fan as well um, in our consortium. But I think it's really important for students and for families to kind of align this to thinking about what gifts does the student have? What are their strengths? What are their gifts? And what are ways that they're able to share that with the rest of us? And really focusing on that in an authentic way versus feeling like there's this checklist of things that you need to do to get into a particular school. Um, and that kind of transitions us into this next idea of building the team. As we work more individually with juniors second semester, I really liken this to how they've transitioned into Stevenson, right? There's a whole team of people that helped your student come into Stevenson. And there's a whole team of us that help them with the steps after Stevenson, whatever that might be. Obviously, we're hoping at this point, the students are now the ones kind of driving the bus the next two years. Um, you know, maybe as shy eighth graders, as parents, we were nudging them along into these directions, but we're hoping that we're transitioning into them leading this a little bit more. 
but parents are and their friends and teachers who have all been through this process but will be listening to them every day as they go through their options. Their counselor is also part of that team. And as I said, we are meeting with them as well. And the college admissions counselors are part of that team. We work with amazing humans on the college side that represent their schools. There's over 150, 200 schools that have regional reps from all over the world that are located in Chicago that are here to connect with our students as well. And we'll talk about more of those avenues coming up. As we start to move forward and talk about students that are looking at the four year college opportunity, we really talk a lot about fit. And I'm amazed at how many juniors that I meet with right now and talk about, you know, have you thought about how size might impact your experience or the location or the setting of a school and really thinking about that deeper. So when we talk about finding the fit, we believe that students will flourish where they feel most comfortable. And fit is in three ways. We talk about it as an academic fit. Do they have the majors and the opportunities around them that they're interested in? We talk about a social emotional fit, which a lot of times is felt when they're on the college campus and they see the student body and they see the setting and the surrounding area of the school. And we talk about a financial fit too, which is very important as well. So you. Still me. Um, so as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, academic rigor is part of it, knowing like the, the, the environment of the school, does it feel competitive in nature? Is that something that fuels you? Is it something that's more inclusive, more collaborative, more hands-on? The size of the school, which I think, you know, if we had a dollar for every time a student says in our office, I want something bigger than the size of Stevenson, um, we hear that all the time, but we really do encourage students to think about size a little bit differently. Like, do you feel okay in a lecture hall that's two, three, four hundred in size and navigating the large campus to find the professor's office hours across the campus that might even need a shuttle bus to get there? Um, or do you prefer classes that are all under 50 and the professor knows your name? So really thinking about size. And I think the crazy fact that we share is Stevenson is actually bigger than most colleges in the nation. We actually know all the big names because there's not actually that many bigger ones. Um, they're a little more finite, but there are a lot more of those that are under 5,000 students or under 4,500. The location of the campus has become part of that factor too. Um, again, we talked about urban setting city. Are they okay navigating that and, and being in an environment like that? Do they prefer an oasis of a college town where everything's there because the college is there, but not much of anything else? The distance from home. You know, how often do they want to come home and how do they get home? You know, is it a two hour ride from the college campus to get to an airport that they're navigating to themselves for themselves? I have a friend um, who's had two sons go through this process and she says she knows her son like clockwork every six weeks. He needs to come home, get away from the roommate, unplug from college, get a little home cooked meal, some help with some laundry, and then they're ready to go back and face the next six weeks. So knowing that about yourself, some reflection. Areas of study, personal factors, whether that might be um, religious factors or you have an IEP or a 504 or dining plans and accommodations for allergies. There's a lot of personal factors that come into that. And cost is really important too, which we'll talk and elaborate more on next year through the financial aid night and our junior presentation. But we really do believe that there's a, a, a healthy conversation to be had about you know, what is a realistic number as the family feels about, and then as schools maybe are higher than understanding that, have to see how the cost comes in into play if they can bring that cost down um, in that process. So I think really having that conversation around cost can be really important as well. Ms. English uh, referred to how right now we're like in the midst of kind of working with our juniors, um, especially, and their families. We're literally meeting with multiple juniors and parents and guardians every single day throughout the spring semester. And a question that I think we both get that sometimes surprises us a little bit, I got a couple of these questions just today, was I don't even know where to get started. I don't know how to do my research. I'm not really sure where to start looking, how to navigate all of the information. And I get it. It can be very overwhelming to like put, do Google searches and to kind of look through different sites and there's, there's blogs out there and there's parent communities. And who do you listen to? What books do you kind of um, use as references? So, we wanted to highlight just a couple of our favorite sources to get really good college information because it, it's easy to get lost 
and kind of the web and just kind of things that get thrown out there in the community. Our favorite site is, not surprisingly, our own. <laughs> we have spent the last five years really building up the um, information that's on our site. Um, we kind of started, we didn't start from square one, but we kind of broke it down quite a bit several years ago, and we started to build it out. We think of it as like a big digital library um, that includes not just textual information, but we also have a robust YouTube page as well with lots of really good short videos that every year we're constantly talking about as a team. What are some small ways in a couple minutes that we can share information on a relevant topic about the college admissions process? So we, I always tell families, and I think so does Miss English, continue to go to our website. We, we literally update it regularly with resources, with information, with PDFs, with documents. So continue to use that and bookmark it for yourself. We highlighted tonight Naviance. Maybe, hopefully, you learned a couple new things about Naviance. We think it's good to kind of refresh your memory. I find that when I'm working with juniors, you know, families that are kind of a year ahead of you guys in the process, sometimes they're still kind of getting the hang of Naviance. And I think this spring, this summer, even this upcoming fall is a really good opportunity to do a deep dive and all the great resources with the Naviance. And we just really did a, a small dive tonight because there's just so much information on there. In terms of programming at school, I feel like every night there's like one, if not multiple programs that you have the pleasure of choosing from to be educated about. Um, that's true on a given week. That's why the calendar can be tricky to figure out for next year because it's everybody kind of competing for different large spaces like this. So I would encourage you to continue to look at that calendar, not just within our team, but throughout the whole school, various academic divisions, speakers, to bring opportunities to learn about topics that might be related to you as a student and you guys as a family. College websites are another really good source. Sometimes people will sort of share with us they've heard different things, but I usually say, let's go straight to the college's website, whether it's the admissions part of the website or at U of I's website, they have a really good major explorer where you can do a deep dive on the curriculum and different academic programs across the whole university. So let's go straight to that site. So I would encourage you to go straight to the university or college websites for their own information that they publish. The College Board Company is the company that oversees the whole um, AP program and the whole SAT suite of assessments. They also have a really good college search tool, just like in Naviance, that we really like. It's called Big Future. So if you're looking for another source for just global college information, uh, collegeboard.org is your site to check that out. And then related to cost and financial aid that we just referenced, finaid.org is a really good way to kind of do a deeper dive on financial aid. We will do a financial aid night as we do each fall at the end of September, as we mentioned earlier. And this is one of the several of the top websites that we kind of highlight during that presentation. In terms of other ways to do research, we really are big fans of visiting college campuses. So whether it be this summer, next fall, thinking about trying to see a variety of different schools firsthand through an official campus visit is something we cannot recommend even more than we are tonight. Like it's one of those things that it's to do a virtual visit can be somewhat helpful, but to get your boots on the ground, to be walked around by a current student, to go through a current information session on what's happening on that campus is really the best way to do research. And for you guys as students to kind of get a really good sense of if that culture, that environment is a good fit for you. So we really encourage that moving forward. Um, there are still virtual information sessions that are happening, so you guys can kind of be on the lookout for that. But there's a college fair that's coming up that might be worth your time. It's being hosted at Barrington High School on April 8th. And there is a QR code if you want to reference uh, registering ahead of time. It makes the um, process of being at the fair a little bit more efficient because they'll give you a barcode that if you go to individual tables, when the colleges are represented at the fair, and there's a few hundred that will plan to be there, you don't have to like fill out your information for each school. You could just kind of hand over your barcode to get information sent to you guys digitally or through the mail. And then as rising juniors, because you guys will be rising juniors in about two and a half months, I don't know if you've thought about that, you're going to have the opportunity next fall to participate in our college rep visit season. So we're going to bring probably 150 to 200 different colleges from around the world. We're going to invite them to campus. They'll be in the College Career Center. We sit on each one of those visits and take very thorough notes that, again, we put into Naviance that you saw through that Naviance video. So we encourage you guys as juniors next year to kind of look at that long list of schools. And again, if you heart it within Naviance, they're going to email you, Naviance will, saying, hey, they've just scheduled a visit you know, on September 20th. Come to the College Career Center and you can join us for that rep visit. 
We should also mention that next week, Niles West is also doing a college fair as well. Um, and I think we advertised it out in the Daily Digest and you can go through, I think the same QR code will take you to StriveScan um, to where you can see and register for the Niles West one as well. Mm -hmm. So the timeline, right? We wanna kinda of help you guys understand the bigger picture of how does this work over the next two years, a little over two years, right? It's kinda of crazy to think that our sophomores are closing in on halfway through. Again, I have one and I had that moment last week where I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like almost halfway through high school. Like that's mind blowing to me, it went so fast. Um, but the goal really kind of during the first semester of junior year is to start to think about some colleges and maybe do some visits. And there, as Mr. Miller said, they're really easy to do some close by. You could go over and see Lake Forest College, even if maybe you're not genuinely interested in it, to see what a smaller than Stevenson school feels like. You could go one into the city pretty easily. You could go visit one out in a college town just to get a little bit of variety. Definitely explore the CCC resources and materials. And as we talked about, the juniors are invited to come and visit with the reps in the fall to learn more about them. And then we will have a college night, as we had mentioned been earlier in the presentation, that will line up usually the first week of December. We don't have the date locked in yet. Um, and again, it'll be in person via Zoom and recorded. But it's really our big kickoff to kind of working with junior families. And then um, there's definitely regional fairs and national fairs that we talked about. We definitely talk about upward grade trends. I think it's a little shocking for juniors to understand that that year next year is oftentimes the last grades that colleges are going to see as they're starting to review for admissions. So they're applying very early freshman, I'm sorry, senior year in the fall. So junior year grades are, are definitely looked at a little closer. And then definitely connect with your counselor. And we should say, if you haven't already, like the scope meetings are in process. So, you know, if you want to do a sophomore scope meeting, that is something that I think is still available for families. For second semester, we want to make sure that you're registering for your classes for a strong senior year. That is part of the pieces that they're using for the admission review. We'll talk more about the ACT and SAT here in a few minutes, but you probably want to take a couple of those. I think Mr. Miller and I are back kind of in the pandemic mode of like all these schools right now we're hearing are starting, not all, but many are starting to flip to requiring testing. Um, Illinois is gonna be remaining test optional, but testing is something we'll be talking more about. And then, you know, visit colleges as you can. I know my, my kids, it's a hazard of my job. And I'm like, oh, look, there's three colleges on the way to this location. We're gonna do some, you know, road trips along the way. Um, and then you will be scheduling, that's when you have the opportunity to schedule a meeting with either myself or Mr. Miller, depending on which counselor is yours, where we will have you complete a worksheet. Um, and then once you have the worksheet, you schedule a 45 minute family meeting with us where the student and a parent is there. And we develop a list of colleges for you to consider as part of that and answer more individual questions. And then hopefully by the time, you know, summer hits that you have a reasonable list of schools that deserve you. And that's really how I frame this, deserve your time and your energy and money in the process. And then you'll be really kind of working through that application process late summer, early fall of your senior year. So we get a lot of questions about like students asking us like, what, what do I need to be adding to my resume, to the kind of my activity list to be more competitive? when I apply to colleges. They get kind of that flavor of a question pretty regularly, especially from juniors. We wanted to kind of make this a focal point of this presentation, which is that we want students to be involved in areas that they find meaningful to them. And colleges have actually been really consistent the last five or so years, where they really don't have a preference on what students are specifically doing outside the actual school day. So whether that's a club here at Stevenson, whether it's something through your church or synagogue, um, through um, a community service organization, maybe you have a job or role of the job in the future, maybe you're helping out at home with um, family members of some kind, regardless of what the area of involvement is, they treat all of those kind of equally. But what they really value is how, 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 to what extent you find it meaningful for your own personal experience and growth. So if you're involved in one of those areas or a couple of those areas, and you're saying to yourself, this is really great. I'm really enjoying it. I'm growing at it. I'm developing good skills in this related area. We, we and sort of colleges encourage you to stay involved in that area and continue that involvement, maybe pursue a leadership opportunity or just to further that involvement. Alternatively, if you're doing something, maybe because your friend joined or you were encouraged by someone in your life to do something 
whether it's service or a job, or maybe you're finding you're just not really getting a ton out of it, colleges would say, we want you to find areas that are gonna be a little bit more meaningful for you. So colleges in general are looking for, as we put on the slide, the nature of the commitment, not necessarily like the number of activities. So truly they're looking for just a handful of areas throughout the high school years that could be in any of those kind of flavors and varieties. So it's really a myth that you need to be doing something specific to get into college, that's really not the case. But if it's really the nature of the commitment and the quality of those experiences and what you personally find rewarding and meaningful throughout high school. So as promised, we're gonna to touch a little bit on everybody's favorite topic, which is testing. Um, and, and we'll kind of go over a little bit of the nuances beyond what's on the slides here too. But all sophomores will be taking the PSAT and all of this has now moved into the digital land. So again, if you've had older students go through this, this was paper and pencil. This test is modified and we'll talk about that modification shortly. And then as a junior, they will take in the fall the digital PSAT NMSQT, which is a mouthful to say, uh, but it's basically the National, National Merit Semi um, Scholarship Qualifying Test. So that is the one in the fall where they can be recognized as a national merit. And then they also will have to take with us as a graduation requirement, the digital SAT. So our juniors are getting ready to do that coming up in April. It's an annual test that is required um, for graduation purposes. So we are an SAT state, and I know there's a lot of questions between the ACT and the SAT, which I can address just a smidge of that in the next slide. But the digital PSAT, I know for those of you that have older children that have gone through this, is quite different than the paper SAT. Um, it is a shorter test and it is all online. So students will bring in their devices, iPads, hopefully charged up, ready to go, or a laptop. They connect um, to the Wi-Fi and then it is a test that um, is adaptive in nature too. So as they start to go through the, the questions, if they're getting them right, the test will move on and progressively get harder. If not, it won't go to those upper level courses. Um, the score is much faster returned, which is a wonderful thing. And the calculator is now on the entire math section. So previously, there was a non-calculator and a calculator part of the SAT, which a lot of students didn't love. Um, oh, my apologies. Um, but now it is allowed on the entire math section. Um, I also am hearing feedback because the um, first digital SAT just happened. The, the reading passages are a little shorter and a little more relevant, so the students are enjoying that. Um, they do get to flag and annotate on the test, but I do hear that's a downfall of the test for some of my students. Some students really prefer the paper and being able to mark it up, and they get slowed down by trying to use the annotation and flagging. There is a timer built right in. I've had another student share with me, they really appreciated that there's not trying to strain to find the clock in the room. There's a timer right above them. Um, and then Khan Academy, this is really important to students who are going through this, has a free customized test prep built in. So it will take their students at PSAT score, pull it in, and then customize the test prep for them and simulate the digital part of it, which is really lovely. Um, and then breaks are now individual and students can move around as they and leave as they finish, which is a very different testing environment. The ACT is not obsolete. Um, I went into this year going, gosh, I don't know why anybody's gonna wanna take the ACT anymore. It's longer, it's paper. Um, there's a science section that lives at the end that sometimes students struggle with because they're tired and it's all these charts and graphs. And it's also a faster paced test, it's about a minute a question. But some of my students are reporting to me, my juniors this year, that they still are preferring the ACT because of the paper factor alone. They do better having the paper test in front of them and the digital is tripping them up. Um, as we talked about, um, most schools are test optional. There are a handful that are going back into the required land. And I'm at the point where I'm just about to like lose the, track, the tracking ability in my head. We just had one announced two days ago, University of Texas Austin is gonna be requiring it. Um, locally, Purdue is the only one in the Big Ten. Michigan is continuing to be test optional. Um, any public in Florida, Georgia, or Tennessee is requiring testing. MIT in Georgetown has for a while. Dartmouth jumped back into testing, and then Yale announced a couple of weeks ago that they're test flexible, because we need a new term in this process, uh, which means they'll take the ACT, the SAT, or all of your AP scores you get to pick. 
Um, but then we have on the other side of the schools that are test free or test blind, um, and that's like all the public schools in California won't take any testing. So we definitely have the range for your sophomores. Our encouragement, I think, is the same. Do the best you can, maybe take it a couple times, but don't obsess on it. I constantly tell students in my office that if you're trading your day-to-day -day academics to study for you know, your biology class or your US history class or whatever class it is to test prep, don't. It's more important to have a strong transcript and to do well there. Testing is a sprint on a Saturday morning. Your transcript is your marathon of what you've been doing for three years. And one of our most favorite cherished reps always used to say, and I think it really hones in, test prep is not meant to be a co-curricular activity. So if you're testing and prepping more than you're enjoying some of the other things in your life, like that, that isn't what it's supposed to be. So please keep that in balance in that. If testing is, provides any type of anxiety or creates some worry for people, we're just giving you guys kind of a general heads up for this topic because it's something that you guys will have to do with the, with the PSAT, which is really just a practice SAT in the fall. So there's really nothing to worry about right now. Um, so if your head is spinning with the dates and the changes, like that's our job, we'll handle that. We'll give you a much deeper dive on like the state of where that world looks like in the late fall when we do our big junior program. So we don't, we don't need to sweat this topic too much because it can be heavy and a lot to kind of just process. So just one step at a time, we're just giving you kind of a preview of kind of what's to come down the road. And if anything, hopefully we gave you a little bit relief from the chatter that you're hearing that you don't have to be test prepping already. Um, and I will mention hot off the presses because I emailed um, someone from the military committee that the ASVAB that we talked about, that Armed Service Vocational Aptitude Battery Test, um, is going to actually be offered at Stevenson on April 18th. So make sure you keep an ear out. For that. Thank you for that. So we shared earlier that, or I shared earlier, that there's a robust YouTube channel that we're continuing to build out that library. Um, so that is uh, our office's Stevenson High School College Career Center's Facebook page. Um, We've had a Facebook page for a number of years as well. We recognize that parents are probably a little bit more on it than students. Um, there was a time where um, the only people that followed us on the Facebook page were our own family members. Um, that's not totally true anymore, but um, it's still not too far off. So if you wanna follow us on social media, feel free. Um, we also have an Instagram as well. We're continuously kind of evaluating how to connect with you guys digitally through social media channels, if that's something you're excited about, feel free to, to follow us and we'll continue to kind of share programming information, some updates on schools and career related information. So be on the lookout if you want to see us in social media channels. And last but certainly not least, we have a very short evaluation. It'll take you probably less than two minutes. That might be even on the long end. If you don't mind, um, someone in the family, from your family, student or parent, guardian, if you could scan that QR code, if you're with us still on Zoom, thank you for hanging in there on Zoom. If you could click on the link, I think we're going to also drop it in the chat for you guys as well. Um, again, it'll take a very short survey. We're just always looking to evaluate our programming. So any feedback you're willing to share with us, we're, we're receptive to hearing what you got to say, and we'll try to continue to improve what we got to tell you in, in the future. Really, thank you coming out tonight. I know all three of us are very honored to be part of your student and your family's journey as your student is thinking about life beyond us at Stevenson High School. Uh, we don't take our jobs lightly. We really know that they learn a lot about themselves as well. So thank you for trusting us to help you through that journey. Thank you. Have a great night.